<laughs> Whoa, hey, and welcome to Glue Wednesday. My goodness, look, I'm actually coming on here a little uh, closer to the broadcast time, which I kept moving, but I just, you know, did it in this, for the sake of authenticity as well as, man, what we are going through. And this topic turned out to be much more, uh, as I got looking into it and, and wanting to get more out of it, I kept finding things. And so that's why I kept moving the time. And and I just thought I'd let you know that because I think that that's part of what we have to recognize. Even when we talk about glue, God's love undoes everything. I had a challenge in putting this together and because I'm going to be, you know, talking about empathy. I get, you got that in the thing. And as you start to as you start to look at it, you start again, you start to see the different nuances of, of, of how you could be looking at the thing, as well as what we're going to come to the what I'm going to come to the conclusion of at the end is that there is no cure. There is, you know, there's no, and there's no one size fits all. And we have to sometimes just recognize that, um, you know, people are people. And what's going to happen? So anyway, wow. Let, so let me let me show you. Let me uh, you know talk to you about what I've got, and we'll we'll see what kind of um, comments you have in there. And something tells me, you know, hey, we might end up having this as one of those discussions that we make a two part series. We may end up moving this uh, and continuing it next week, but we'll see. You know, even to the point where we we will get through everything that I have, and then I'll I'll like it so much that I'll redo it. And um, and just come back and maybe you'll have some questions in the feed that I can use. OK, so glue, glue Wednesday, God's love undoes everything. And please feel free. Those of you who are there. Put your name or something in the thread so I can give you a shout out because I certainly love to do that. This I hope is to be my interactive session. Yeah. OK. But yeah, we're doing what I call the gas series. And see, it starts out really easy for me, GASH, Glue Alphabet Series, because last year we started that you during the pandemic where, because I, use, I like to be creative, I would say, give me a letter, a word that begins with this letter, and I'll get that into next week's message. And so every week, you know, people would give me their words. Uh, I'd give them what's going to be our letter for the next for the next week, and they'd give me their words and their threads. So at, at any time, right now, today, we're going to be using the letter E, so uh, the letter I, so, you know, spoiler alert, words that begin with the letter H are going to be used in our topic next week, even if we continue this topic. So here are my co-authors this week, and the words are today for, are from Carolyn Simmons. She gave me the word impossible. Roger Carroll Rogers gave me, oh, and I have, I love it because I had to, you know, look this one up, and it's ignominious ignominious or ignominious, no, ignominious. And then Daphne Francis gave me instantaneous. Victor Morris gave me invincible. Okay. Shout out. Thank you. Okay. You're doing double duty. I hear you. Thank you, Roger Carroll. And, and again, you know, my, my apologies. No, my, my blessing that was running late because the topic was so, is so rich. And, and I think it's, it is great food for thought for everybody and everything going forward. So th this is going to be interesting. So yeah, Roger Carroll, thank you. And uh, oops, let me put that up. Yo, let me get her face up there. Yeah, they'll think I'm just talking to the wind. But <laughs> on a Delta Sigma Theta State of Illinois Legislative Conference also. Woo, double duty. <coughs> and we have to give ourselves credit for the ability time sometimes, by the way, to multitask. There's a whole lot of things that come into everything that we do. But hey, let me move on. As you enjoy today's message, um, what I want you to do is uh, your senses will be alerted to the letter I. That's what we're going to be looking for for the letter I, because you've heard me say them right They're in these words. So you'll be you'll be listening for these words as well as for any words that begin with the letter I, and that's um and and that's actually a good practice for you to develop, knowing that it's similar to when you're going to a conference, for instance, a meeting or a class, knowing what you're looking for for certain information as a confirmation of why you're attending will help you with your learning. So it's just like you prepare yourself when you're going into, um, you, you know, you're going into a learning situation. And what that's called is the beta mainhoff mainhoff uh, phenomenon. The beta mainhoff phenomenon is the phenomenon where something you recently learned suddenly appears everywhere. So that's why I'm saying you, the letter I 
is going to seem to appear a lot in today's message, but more importantly, those words that were my my letter, I, those words that we had already chosen will be appearing. So that's called the Bader Mainhoff phenomenon. It's also sometimes referred to as frequency bias or illusion. And it's the seeming appearance of a newly learned or paid attention to concept in unexpected places. Now that's it's expected because it's on this broadcast, but I bet throughout your day, you're going to run into words that begin with the letter I, <laughs> as well as you may see some of these words that are now becoming into your vocabulary throughout your day. So that would be the unexpected places that these will continue to pop up. So even if you say, oh, oh that's ignorant. Oh, that's an illusion. Oh, that's uh, impressive. You, you know, start to notice the, le- the words that you use today or hear that begin with the letter I. And then you know what? Just give yourself a little smile and recognize that you're enjoying the Beta Mainhoff phenomenon, okay? Meanwhile, today's message is empathy, empathy. And my message is sponsored, I call my my message sponsored today is uh, 2 Kings 6 and 17. And Elisha prayed, O Lord, open his eyes so he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire, all around Elisha. And you will see why that's our today's sponsor. Okay. Uh, and empty, because in my belief, empty is what I call the skeleton, which is not a real word. It's, um, oops, empty, em- empty, E M P T H Y. See, empty, E M P T Y is in there. So I call that the skeleton <laughs> of uh, em- empty, is the skeleton of empathy because all of those letters are in there. And I clicked that because I didn't have, uh, I didn't put that in there, but let's, so so we've seen that here, but here's what I'm saying to you. You have to empty yourself to make room for others who they, uh, to others to be who they are and worthy of compassion. And let me breathe and slow down just because the message is on later does not mean it's late. <laughs> okay. All right. But you can see empty, you have to empty yourself. So that's what empathy is. You have to empty yourself to make room for others to be who they are and worthy of compassion. Imagine, now that's not a dictionary definition of empathy, but that's that's how I want you to be looking at it today. And Roger Carroll gave me a word, ignominious, and it's deserving or causing public disgrace or shame. Deserving or causing public disgrace or shame, especially of events or behavior. It's embarrassing. It means inglorious, shameful, dishonorable, disgraceful, discreditable, vile, nasty, embarrassing, mean, offensive, and rotten. And you know what? I wanted to read all of those words because when we look back at the January attack on the Capitol, many of these words get a spot in our vocabulary. And I chose to read them all because we're expected to now call upon our empathy in order to move forward. We are now expected to empty ourselves out to make room for others to be who they are and worthy of our compassion, okay? We are expected to um, um, call upon our empathy in order to move forward. And I read them all because I want us to make sure that we know that empathy is a difficult It's a difficult skill and undertaking because that's what it is. It's a skill and an undertaking. And I read them all because we also don't think that we understand what they could possibly have had possibly have been thinking during the insurrection when in fact i think we can understand it that's what i'd like to say i think we can you see what we have to understand is that empathy is not forgiveness empathy is not forgiveness we don't have to go right into a mode of forgiving what happened in the attack on the capitol what we have to do is find a way to empathize, to understand. So empathy is the ability to understand another person's thoughts and feelings in a situation from their point of view rather than from ours. And I'm sure that most of us think that that's impossible and way more than they deserve. However, the truth is 
The goal really must be understanding rather than forgiving and forgetting, or I'm sorry, rather than forgiving and agreeing with what happened. And the reminder must be that we may not have walked in one another's shoes, but we sat in one another's row because we're all going through something. We've all been through something and we're all going through something. So please be sure to also watch the video in my feed that I shared from the Cleveland Clinic and notice how many people are in the same space experiencing a different moment. Okay, so what you saying there, Vic? Hey, everybody, miss you all. Good to still be. Okay, so you want to say your hellos? <laughs> yeah, welcome, Vic, Roger Carroll. And so, you know, so yeah, we're talking empathy, Vic. And um, hey, go on. What's going on, Shanga? Great to see you, my brother from uh, the, the, the G three men. My ministry on Thursday nights, which is a blessing to me. Amen. So yeah, welcome to the family. But um, uh, yeah, I don't know when y'all came on, but like I say, right now I'm talking about the January insurrection. And, and what we have to do is recognize that most of us think it, oh, I, so let me put back up the uh, definition for empathy, the ability to understand another person's thoughts and feelings in a situation from their point of view rather than our own. So I want to just repeat, I'm sure that we think that's impossible to, to understand uh, and more than they deserve that we don't need to bother trying to have that empathy. But the truth is we have to understand that empathy is about understanding rather than forgiving and agreeing. And the reminder must be that, that we may not have walked in other people's shoes. We may not have been a part of that attack on the Capitol. We don't know what was going on in their minds and in their hearts. We see what the news has told us, but we're still seeing different uh, justifications from every side. That's why they say there's always three sides to every story, right? Mind, yours, and the truth. So your messenger is always going to be important, who you're getting your input from. So make sure that you look at that video that's in my thread and my feed also from the Cleveland Clinic. And then notice how many people are in the same space experiencing a different moment, which is what we were doing. Those of us who were watching it, the, um, the attack on TV, those who were hearing about it, those who watched it after it was already told about, so you know, so you, so you, in uh, in some way, you you had a, a preempted feeling of what you were going to be watching. And here's what Shanga said: empathy has to be a lifestyle. And thank you, because remember uh, uh, what I said earlier is that it's a it's it's a skill, you know. So it, yeah, it has to be a lifestyle. And and fast forward, I'm going to say close by saying it's a decision and it's a commitment that you have to make. So yes, empathy is a lifestyle because you have to choose when to employ it. And that's why what I'm going to do is now actually give you some uh, definitions, three types of empathy for us to understand and use, and then use a lighter example. So my example is, it's late Friday night and you're relaxing after a hectic week, reading your favorite book when your phone rings. And it's a close friend calling in a panic because she's just lost her job. And you say, oh, don't worry, you'll find another one. Besides, you knew your company was having financial problems. Didn't you expect this? Why are you so upset now? There's a stunned silence on the other end of the phone, followed by a drop call. You did not show any empathy. You thought you were trying to comfort her. Uh, uh, so what went wrong without first empathizing with her? Like Shanga said, it's a life skill without first empathizing with her and listening to her concerns, seeing things from somebody else's viewpoint, you might've done more harm than wrong. So let's look at three types of empathy. One is cognitive and cognitive is simply knowing how the other persons feel and what they might be thinking which is sometimes called perspective taking. If you imagine yourself in your friend's shoes in that scenario with losing the job, you know she is likely to be feeling sad as well as anxious because she relies on that income to pay her student loans. However, having only cognitive empathy keeps you at a distance from your friend. To truly connect with your friends, you need to share their feelings. And this is why emotional 
empathy becomes so important. Emotional empathy is when you feel physically along with the other person as though their emotions were contagious. And then that uh, uh, they, uh, this type of empathy can also extend to physical sensations, which is why we cringe when someone else stubs their toe. In this case, you would look inward to identify situations where you were similarly anxious about the future. The situation itself need not be identical as each individual is different. What's important is that the emotions resulting from the situations are the same. That's emotional empathy. So you've successfully understood what your friend is feeling, cognitive, and you put yourself in a similar emotional space, emotional, not emotional, now what? Well, you can use the insights gleaned from cognitive and emotional empathy to have what's called compassionate empathy. And compassionate empathy, with this kind of empathy, we not only understand a person's predicament and feel with them, but we are spontaneously moved to help if needed. So it's the balance, uh, um, um, compassionate empathy is the balance between cognitive and emotional empathy, and it enables us to act without being overcome with feeling or jumping straight into a problem-solving process. The attackers were experiencing emotional empathy, physically connected to one another as though their emotions were contagious. And, and you could see that in, you know, it, it took one person to break down a barrier before the next, because there was somebody standing there just, you know, uh, pointing their fingers at the cops. And then when, when somebody came from behind and pushed and knocked, now everybody started to move forward diff at different paces because they, they, were, they were caught up in that moment and in that action, that empathy. They were feeling, they, some, some didn't come. Some really didn't come to, to have a physical confrontation, but they got caught up in the, in the environment that they were in. And so our larger and challenging goal is therefore compassionate empathy. That third one, not only understanding their predicament or their state of mind and feeling it with them, but spontaneously move to help them if needed, which is the same grace that we want extended to everyone. And granted, we don't see it. Let me see what your comments say. Victor, I understand that Fox has been brainwashed them into think we fellow Americans and Democrats are, are their sworn enemy. I say Fox is lying to them and must stop. And, and, uh, and, and yes, and, and I'm glad I'm, I'm going to put some opinions up there. And then, uh, yes, empathy is great. And then acknowledge that it sounds stressful. You can only imagine how they feel and promote positive. I want y'all to think about those things as I come up with more stuff that I found. And, and see, and the beauty of, of, of and this is why I like our um, sessions on Wednesday, is I'm not with you when I put these together as, and as, as I'm doing my research on them. And, uh, and I love when you say something that preempts what I'm going to share anyway. But I'm going to be talking about both of these comments as we go in. And anybody else, even if you're watching on the video, always put your comments in rather than wait to hear what's said. You can, in fact, you can easily pause the tape and put a comment in. Okay. But what that does is that gives someone else a chance to have a discovery. Uh, you know, they can see another opinion, you know, before, you know, the big reveal, et cetera. Because the more we can find, see, we spend a lot of time looking for the differences instead of the commonalities. And sometimes it's the con commonality, and not sometimes, but it really is usually the commonalities. And, and so sometimes and usually the commonalities that make the difference, uh, even though um, that, that make the positive difference in our lives. What do we have in common? Yeah, we, we differ in this way, but what we need to do is work on the commonalities and how can we build them out so that they're stronger, so that, you know, as a, what they call a win-win situation, which is a hard thing to get. But because so much of it, like Changa said, you know, empathy is a skill. And one of the things that I'm going to also say to you, it's a commitment and it's a lifestyle. And it based on how you're, so, it's based on how you're socialized. 
So, so like what you say, Vic, you know, it's it's great. But here's, see, you're socialized. You, you've already, uh, uh, you know, you can grow up in a home and you're saying Fox has brainwashed people and Fox is lying. Well, guess what? Now, uh, whoever's hearing you say that, if you you have children in the household and you're saying that, what happens? Your children are hearing this and this is what they learn. So that's, and, and I'm not saying Vic right or wrong. I'm saying I'm great. It's, I'm glad it's there because this is what I'm saying is that if we were to try to put ourselves in the, in, in the attacker's shoes, we might find that some of them are, some of them are actually victims of what they've learned. And that's why I said everybody didn't come to, to, to get into a physical brawl. Some may have thought they were participating in what was going to be a, a peaceful uh, taking a stand for their rights. You know, everybody didn't come with that nasty attitude, but then they got caught up in it. And don't we all, that, doesn't that happen to all of us? So that's why I say, when I said earlier, you may think, what I, because how did I put it? You may think you don't, um, you may, uh, 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 we don't understand that there. You may think that you can't possibly understand what they could have been thinking, and when in fact, I think we can understand what they've been thinking because it's what it's, it's, you know, if you're in an environment that's feeding you one narrative, that's the narrative you go on. See, and, and we're going to come to a part where I want to talk to you about how just changing your vocabulary can be such a, a solution. So we're going to see that as well. So thanks a lot, Vic, for that. What was the last thing that I had up there? And that was about compassionate empathy. Okay. So, but my goal today, oh, oh, wait, a comment just came in. Let me see what they, okay. They are our brothers and sisters <laughs> of whom we don't agree. And I actually, I smile because I posted that same thought. I don't know if you saw it, Shanga, uh, but I, I posted that um, earlier uh, last week that, you know, oh, in fact, I put, don't become so anti-racist that you become a racist. They are brothers and sisters with whom we disagree. Mm, so thank you. Thank you for that, Shanga. Amen. All right. So, but here's, here's my deal though. My goal is not to implore you to forgive and forget. I'm not, that's not, I don't want you to forgive and forget what happened. That's not my goal. My goal is to implore you to not let it become a source of stress for you that leads to health problems. OK, that that's that's what so that's what, like what Shanga, what Shanga said. Um, it's a it's a lifestyle. And Vic said empathy is great. You know, every uh, let me see what else. It, it was something else that somebody said um, that I that I thought was a good connection. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. Uh, and then, OK, Victor says great. So that's what it is. And then just go to there. And, and it's stressful. Yeah, it sounds stressful. And, and so that that could be a part of a health issue for you. So that's why what I want to talk to you about is uh, to go back and collect some of those words. Disgraceful. Okay. Let's go back and collect some of those words. And here they are. Disgraceful. Discreditable. Vile. Nasty. Mean. See, we are also reminded when we when we look at those words, we are reminded of how we cringe and become angry. And then see, angry is a controlling emotion. If I can keep you angry, I can control you because you will seek to react to my next move rather than be open to solutions. So see, if 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 you you remain angry at what happened, you don't really work toward the solution because you're now in place to say, you know what, the next thing they do, I'm going to do this. Don't you see that that means they're controlling you, waiting for the next the next thing. So according to the National Library of Medicine, um, of Medicine National Institute of Health, anger can cause psychological stress and increase the risk of atherosclerotic diseases, including strokes and heart attacks. Chronic stress is pervasive during negative life events and can lead to the formation of plaque in the arteries. Now, atherosclerosis refers to the buildup of fats, cholesterol, and other substances in and on your artery wall, which is plaque, which can restrict blood flow. 
So that's why I say it can lead to health problems. He who he who can anger you controls you. Absolutely. Because that they are now in control of your emotions. And so they can get you because there's a tipping point, a trigger to where you get you express the emotion of anger. I am angry at this person. Now they are controlling. Because right, weren't you? Oh, I'm in a good mood. I'm feeling good. Ah, oh, what this person did, that just pissed me off. They just took your mood. So he who can get you angry can control you. So it can, so again, recognize that um, that anger is, is also can cause psychological stress and increase the risk of plaque, uh, of, I, I'm, you see, I don't want to try to use that word again, right? Ather, ather, where is it? Atherosclerotic, atherosclerotic, atherosclerotic <laughs> diseases, including strokes and heart attacks. Chronic stress is pervasive during negative life events, which is that what that was, and can lead to the formation of plaque in the arteries. Now, in an article by WebMD with Dr. Laura Kubinski, uh, Okay, Laura Kubzanski is an, an assistant per, uh, professor at Harvard School of Public Health who has studied the role of stress and emotional and cardiovascular disease. She said, scientists don't all agree that anger plays a role in heart disease, but many studies have suggested a, a significant link. And I think the case is strong. This is what she said. And then the article goes on to say, for example, one large study published in circulation in 2000, found that among 12,986 middle-aged African-American white, uh, African-American and white men and women, those who rated high in traits such as anger, but had normal blood pressure, were more prone to coronary artery disease, which is CAD, or heart attack. And in fact, the angriest people face roughly twice the risk of heart attack and almost three times, I'm sorry, twice the risk of coronary artery disease and almost three times the risk of heart attack compared to subjects with the lowest levels of anger. And then she went on to say, anger may not be the only culprit in heart disease risk. But according to her research, it suggests that other extreme negative emotions may contribute too. But anger is a problem, but so too are high levels of anxiety and depression because they tend to co-occur. Um, People who are angry a lot also tend to have other chronic negative emotions as well. So this is what I'm saying, and it goes back to what Changa, Changa said. You know, if I can keep you angry, I can control you. And that's what I'm saying. This, this anger you may be feeling about the insurrection and, and going forward could become a health risk for you, okay? And what, let's see what Vic says. I have dismissed any darkness I see and pray for them now as they know not what they do. Go on and get on the cross, Vic. But let, again, watch how I got that worked into this thing as well. I love it. Uh-huh, Wusa, yeah, you have to, you have to. And you know, part one of the things about stress is that it's, it's, um, it's commiserating over something that you can't control. Yeah, and 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 so so th- and that's part of why you have to let the negative st- stress go. If you can't control the situation, you can express your dissatisfied or your dissatisfaction or your distaste. But to constantly think about it when you have no control, what's going on with our politicians? What's going on with this? Why are they doing that? Why are you doing that? Don't you think that in most cases that somebody else? who has the power to make that change is considering those same things. Well, that goes back to, you know, I'm not Mr. Political, but, you know, did you vote? You know, see, I, you know, who I voted for either got in or didn't get in. But the key is I voted. So let's say that who you voted for did not get in. Or, or let's say you didn't vote and who you didn't want to get in got in. OK, well, you have no argument. You didn't vote. Maybe your vote would have been the one that didn't get that person in. But whoever you voted for and they got in, well, now you have to believe that based on you thinking that they were the right person, that they're thinking about doing the right thing. And it's not an instantaneous change. It's going to take time. It's going to take time. All right, which is what we saw all is as just as well. Okay, so so let's recognize that anger 
is a problem, but so too are high levels of anxiety, anxiety and pressure and depression. So let me add my creativity. My cre- Remember I said uh, empty is the skeleton of empathy because the only two letters that are missing are the A and the H em- between empty and empathy. And so my A-H is, <sighs> that's that woosa. <laughs> and it's the awakening and the healing the awakening and the healing. See, I creatively take a look at the references. I want you to creatively take a look at the references to God in empathy and empathy. And you'll see it's T-H-Y-P-A-T-H, thy path. You know, thy path. And that should remind us that you are all, you are most invincible when you find your piece of the puzzle based on what you're doing intentionally or unintentionally to contribute to the solution or the problem. And so here's what I want to say to you. Are you conscious of using white people, the police, they? Are you conscious of how you use them instead of using some, several, those I know? See, these are all expressions that give you the chance to honor those who are with you and decide that that number is bigger and more worthy of your attention, your energy, and your support. Remember our sponsor, Second Kings? Let them see. Let them see who, who's on our side. Your vocabulary, it may seem like it's a small vocabulary change, but it's actually huge. Because remember that you are somebody else's messenger and possibly only their their only experience of someone who fits your profile. Okay? And so what I want to say to you is I had the blessing, for instance, of winning a high school scholarship to attend a private boarding school in Massachusetts, where I was my first year, I was one of seven blacks in a 200 student population. My second year, we were one of five. My third year, one of three. Okay. But in my junior year, because I went sophomore, junior, and senior. In my junior year, I had become a mentor and friend to some freshmen. And a couple of them were comfortable enough to tell me that where they grew up, they didn't know that Black people could be friendly. And I'm proud to say to this day that back then, I was not offended. I was not offended when they expressed that. You see, even at 15, I understood that people, and this was the point I wanted to, that I made earlier, people view the world through the comfort of familiar surroundings. How you're socialized, and that's what I was saying about Vic, when you put how you, what you're saying about Fox News or about the, around the people who, who you have impact on, and you may not know the people. They may not agree with you. So maybe somebody who doesn't like you, and so they hear that, what that does that do? That strengthens their resolve to continue to be a pain in your neck. And the people who believe in you, that strengthens their resolve to say, oh, okay, yeah, we need to stick together and, and be against this common enemy. It's tough. It, you know, it's tough, but that's the key that you have. To, we are socialized, and I wrote that, and you can go on and quote me, but we, we are socialized through, uh, because we view the world through the comfort of familiar surroundings. Even with that understanding, we know that empathy isn't instantaneous. As Changa says, it's a choice. And this is why I said, you know, fast forward, it's a choice and it's a commitment. One that we have to take seriously by, I believe, looking within and understanding why we feel how we feel and then respecting that others have that same option. And that's why I love it because Roger Carroll intentionally will intentionally will give us focus. And, you know, one of my affirmations is focus, F-O-C-U-S, finding ourselves creates unlimited success. You have to look inside. And that's why I didn't even click it. I said, let me read this first to show that, again, we're on the same, we're we're as one. We're in the same mindset, but it's just us. It's the intentionality of it. I love that word, Roger Carroll. And see, there's an I word. There's that Bader Madoff syndrome, right? Phenomenon. But we have to recognize that it's, it's how we feel. 
that makes a difference. Yes, I'm outraged with what you did, but I'm not going to keep stressing that. I'm not going to stress over that. I'm going to now do what do I have to do in my life to, uh, to, to make sure that my vote is and my voice is heard that goes against that. But what changes can I make so that maybe, because think about it, the person who, uh, the, the people who attack the Capitol, can you convert them, you know, get them to, to can you, stupid, why'd you do that? You fool. Are they now going to say, you know, you're right. Let me come to the other side. How about this is where that, that compassion and empathy is such a hard thing. Because how about, wow, you know what? When you think about uh, what the capital stands for and, and as we see ourselves as Americans and as brothers and sisters. See, you know, it, it could be the tone. It can be the tone and not a phony one. Do you really understand? And I hope I gave you some food for thought to set to recognize that you do understand. You do understand because whoever, and again, let's use Victor, uh, his, his, his post against Fox is just as much as somebody who watches Fox posting against MSNBC. And this, so you, you've got the two different channels and, and, and you're all, if you're only listening to your messenger, then that message gets stronger. Can we get these two people to switch? and listen to the other broadcasts and see what we can find out. And that's a tough thing to do, okay? But, and it's hard. So what we got? Vocabulary, one writer writes, one speaker speaks. It's what I use. Yeah. One writer writes and one speaker speaks. And 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 you know, and and, and, I, and I'm I'm thinking that I'm catching the typo there on that um, um, Shanga. One speaker speakers. One speaker speakers is what I, yeah. Uh, one vo- vo- vocabulary, one speaker writes, one writer writes, one speaker. I think that's what you mean. One speaker speaks is what I use. <laughs> All right. You can, you know what? If you can explain that, I would be much happier. Okay. But, um, you know, so let me go back to, again, just wrapping up some of the comments that we make, you know, yeah, we, you know, Roger Carroll and Vic saying hello because we formed a great family. And so that, oh, okay. So I got it right. Okay, good. All right. But, you know, like I said, I want to just go down what we talked about because again, we have to look at, we have to understand empathy and, and, uh, and, 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 and even as I'm saying this now, I think I am going to talk about it again next week and just give it um, another, another tap on the shoulder because it's huge. All right. Cause I hadn't originally planned on making it focus on um, on the January 6th uh, insurrection or event. See, even if I change it from calling insurrection to an event, that can make a difference. But uh, I must admit that'll be one of the changes that I won't make. I, I consider it an insurrection. And so, you know, and so, you know, so now, uh, you know, that changes, that changes who I'll reach. It's a lifestyle. It's a choice. You, you can't reach everybody. Okay. All right. But, uh, oh, because Vic, and yeah, you got to be strong by Shanga. Empathy is a lifestyle. We just said that. Okay. We talked about Vic, you know, we talked about what, who's your messengers, because that's the thing. And, and, and I, and Vic, and it's interesting because I love the word brainwashed because all of us are brainwashed. All of us are brainwashed. You know, um, we, you know, we, uh, think when you think of wash, you think about, you know, what, what are you cleaning? You know, what are you cleaning with? So we're cleaning our brains with the, with, with the, 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 the ingredients that we want to use. You, you know, you use, everyone uses a different type of detergent when they wash, you know, that doesn't work for me. I'm going to use this. So that's what brainwashing is. That, that source doesn't work for me. I'm going to use this source as well instead. And it's tough. We brainwash, but it's brainwashing is also called faith, isn't it? Because depending on what you believe in, there's, there's people who don't believe in the Bible. There's, we have many different religions. And in some of the religions, people are vehemently against what's being said in the other religions. So yeah, we're all blame, brainwashed. So I, that to me, Vic, is a positive statement. <laughs> because depending on who your messengers are, that's the message that you will take and you will deliver. Okay? But empathy is a great thing. And it is. It is, but how are you going to use it? It's stress. It can be stressful, and I and that's what I don't want you to let it do. Let it become a part of your negative stress and give you health concerns, because you, you really can't 
put yourself in someone else's shoes, but you can say, I've sat in your role because I've been through stuff too. You know, even if we look at, and in fact, next, next week, I'm already thinking, I don't want to say it now and get too far in it, but I'm going to make a slight comparison to Black Lives Matter, you know, because how, you know, the, uh, the back Black Lives Matter um, followers, how, how emotionally were we attached to that and not understanding how someone couldn't understand it? But again, believe it or not, it's the same thing. But see, when it's your cause, it's clearer. But when it's not your cause, now, hmm, I don't get, where did they get that from? Hmm, see, just it's just interesting because that's the key. Yeah, we just don't agree with one another. We just don't all, and you won't all, you're going to continue to not agree. I, I, I take the risk of making this broadcast and know that there are people who won't follow me or won't like what I say. That's okay. Because, see, I believe in what I believe in and who I am. And, and so I, I can't expect everybody to understand me. I don't understand everybody, you know, but I know where I'm open to understanding. And so, therefore, I hope people are open to understanding me as well. OK, never let anger be your, your main emotion. Because he who is, can keep you angry can control you. And so dismiss that darkness. Let the negativity go. And I want you to start thinking about using some of those vocabulary words that I mentioned, because that I think is huge and that can make a difference. And so I want you to start instead of saying white people, you know, because that's, just, oh, well, white people, this is that. I want you to start saying some, because it's not all white people. It's not all cops. It's not all Trump supporters. Okay, you know, and it's it's some and it's several. And and what about the ones I know? Because that one those I know can go positive or negative. Okay, negative or positive. Those I know are like this, but you know what? No, the, the white people I know, or the Trump supporters I know, or the police I know are you know, and see, so these are words that honor and support people who you should really want to be spending your time with. It's just like we do when we talk about the bad kids. Oh, these kids are there. And then I saw the kid and the good kids are right there, but you're not giving them any props because the focus is on what the bad ones did. And so guess what happens? Sometimes the good kids sit there and say, well, dang, they getting all the attention. My, I might as well be one of the bad kids. <laughs> that has really happened. So you switch up your vocabulary and, and recognize that the role that you play makes a huge difference, a huge difference. Carlton Tucker, I almost broke my TV. <laughs> I know that's right. And we mean in a, we live in a, yes, we live in a mean spirited society. We cannot discuss empathy enough. You can't. Yeah. And, and that's, and again, and see, but that now this is what, this is where we call it a safe space. You know, can you discuss it? Is, again, is somebody going to unfriend me? Maybe. You know, I, I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because I'm I'm more interested in having the people who support my thinking and supporting theirs. And then the people who disagree with me, I'm more interested in them expressing that so that we can have a conversation about it. Maybe I can, I can at least understand why you disagree with me. And then I'm okay. Then I can say, well, you know what? that's a valid reason because it's your reason and mine is valid as well. So there's a, we'll agree to disagree in a topic that we won't discuss. It's called human life. So I want, I want to thank all my co-authors today who gave me words that begin with letter I. If you want to get into next week's message, which we will be continuing uh, talking about um, empathy Get a word that has a letter H. Doesn't have to have anything to do with the topic as long as it begins with the letter H. And again, you know, if you're watching the broadcast, you can still put a word that begins with the letter, letter H in there. And I love how Roger Carroll always stretches my vocabulary, hubris. Okay. And um, and so I'll just like, you know, and see, that's again, that's why it, it my original intention for the message um you know, I had my, one idea of how I was going to go with it. But then once I looked up the definition of, uh, woo, woo, what's your word, Robert Karen? You know, I love that word. Incon, um, what was it? Um, da -dum, da -dum. Ignominious. Once I looked it up, it changed how I wanted to go with my message. Y'all, that's the same thing that happens in our conversations. That's why it's important to choose your messengers carefully.
and recognize that you are carefully being chosen as a messenger because how you say what you say goes into somebody else's spirit and then they carry it along. And so next week, one of the words will also be happy. And we'll find ways to make us happy because which is why I said I didn't want us to get over focused on January 6th because what I want us to get recognized that that could be a source of your stress. And I don't want you to let that stress you out and and, um, compromise your good health. So thanks again. This has been Sporty King with Glue Wednesday. Everybody have a wonderful and safe alert. Uh, wonderful and be safe and stay alert. Okay. I was trying to use Vic's sentence. All right. But uh, I'll see. And again, you know, get the words with the letter H in there. I'll see you next week on Glue Wednesday. Thank you. God bless you and ciao.